Previously on Flies in the Jar. The bed. The bed's on fire. Dude, I can't see anything. There's too much smoke. <laughs> Yo, hurry. Uh, it's, it's gonna spread. It's very bad to smoke in bed. Well, you know, this was just a little fire and nobody got hurt, so... I went to sleep around one last night. Even if I had a cigarette, it wouldn't still be lit eight hours later. Whoa, that's like a full-size fire truck. Here's your culprit. A book of matches? I told you I wasn't smoking. Definitely wasn't smoking. This fire was intentionally set. And now, an all-new episode of Flies in the Jar. Flies in the Jar is based on true events. I was living across the street at the time. We started partying the night before and we were still at it the next morning. Back then I was working on demo tapes so I recorded my music all the time. That morning I happened to be trying on a new song for some friends. Pass that or what? You know, in Europe, they don't do no puff puff pass. They smoke the joint for as long as it feels like. Boy, this ain't no Europe. Shut up about the smoking. I told you I was gonna play. You know they don't talk on no weed over there. They roll up blunts with hash. <sighs> ain't you listening? Lady Zen said she's gonna play us a song. Puts fireflies in a mason jar to see what the shelf life of the fireflies are. She says, Here I am, and there you are. <coughs> but fireflies in a mason. going on out front? <gasps> it's the cops. Just hold on. Let me check. I know the popo when I hear them. Dude, there's two cop cars out front. Hurry, flush the weed. That's like two ounces. I ain't throwing that away. You better. I ain't about to go to no jail. Hold up, that there's primo cannabis. It's White Widow from Montreal. Shove it in the toilet. No, not my White Widow. It's not going down. Cause it shouldn't be flushed. Oh my God, it's floating. You have to take it out of the bag. Give me my weed. We'll eat it. Ew, it's been in the toilet. Hurry. They're at the front door. Grab a bud. No way, that water's super dirty and I am about to get sick. That water is the same water as any other water in the house. It's not like sink water. Toilet water's filthy. What? Toilet water and sink water are exactly the same. <sighs> That's not what my mama told me. Just get rid of it. They find that in my house and I'll be the one that gets arrested. Eat up, I'm not spacewalking by myself. I better not get diarrhea. Keep eating. I'll try to stall them. There's a fire across the street. Gerald, how many times do I have to tell you you can't just barge in here like it's your house? But I... I helped put it out. Do you remember our little talk? Hmm. I'm supposed to knock and 
wait for you to answer the door. And why are you supposed to knock? Oh, because I don't live here no more. And? Because I need to think about other people's privacy. Exactly. How'd the fire start? Flies in the jar. Starring Lady Zen, John Jeffers, Kent Evans, and Clara Dunham. Acting consultant, Martin James Grappengetter. Sound mastering by Joshua Holloway. Produced by Lady Zen. Written and created by Nathan Feuerberg. I'll have a gin and tonic. Uh, same for me, but no gin. Uh, you don't happen to have a twist of lime, do you? No, I'm sorry, sir. Why would they have limes? I mean, you never know. They have gin. Why not a twist? About six months before the fire, Gerald was my roommate. Weird guy, to say the least. But the strangest part was I never saw him go to the bathroom. Not once. Uh, can I have an extra bag of nuts? There you are. One day, I was searching everywhere for this one pot that I used for cooking rice, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Finally, I decided to check Gerald's room. I opened the door, and there's the pot, sitting by his bed, and it's filled with what smells like piss and poo. <laughs> but that's not the only pot, dude. Like, half the pots from the kitchen are filled with piss, and there's like at least 20 bottles, Coca-Cola bottles, Gatorade bottles, every kind of bottle, and it's all filled with piss all over the place. <laughs> Tell me more, Georgie boy. So, I stayed up waiting for him to come home. I just sat in a chair by the front door playing my guitar. At around 11 o'clock, I heard him in his room. I'm like, did he come in through the window? I crept back to his door and I knocked. Open up, Gerald. I can hear you in there. We need to talk. Did I wake you? What's up with all the bottles of piss in your room? I'll keep it down. Dude, you can't live like that. You're going to get us all sick. Did I tell you what happened last week? Does it have something to do with all the piss bottles? I was walking down the street, and I saw this girl wearing a sundress. Mm-hmm. And right as I was walking by, she dropped a book on the sidewalk and and she bent over to pick it up right in front of me. And I didn't want to look, but, but I looked. You're going to have to move. You're going to have to find a new place to live, man. I want you out by the end of the week. Is someone else moving in? Just make sure you have all your stuff gone by Tuesday, all right? He moved out on Thursday. I hired a company to come in and clean the room the next day. I thought that'd be the end of it, but it wasn't. Do you think they have those hot towels? Are you even listening to me, man? My hands are just sticky. Anywho, months went by. Then one night, I woke up to the sound of an explosion. I wasn't sure what had made the noise, but it sounded like it had come from the basement. And the one thing I could think of was maybe the water heater had blown out. I lay there with the sheets up to my neck thinking, do I have to go down there now? Is there something that I can do? Can I wait until the morning? I decide to go down. So I pulled myself out of bed, put on my boots, and made my way down to the basement. The 
first thing I noticed was the lights were on. The second thing I noticed was there was a lot of furniture down there. Furniture that shouldn't have been there. There was a bed, a decorative rug, an entertainment center with a TV and VCR, and Gerald's sitting in the recliner watching TV. He stops eating fried chicken long enough to look up and say, Oh, is that you? I stood there with my mouth hanging open for a full minute while he just kept eating chicken and sipping on a Coca-Cola. Finally, I said, Gerald, what are you doing down here? You know what he asked? Is living down here a problem? I wanted to yell, get the hell out of here. But he was so calm, it was scary. I took a step back and said, I would prefer it if you didn't live in my basement. He said, okay. And then turns back to the TV and continues watching Northern Exposure. I've been looking for you all day. I just finished up at the hospital. We gotta get out of here. I was thinking we could drive to the desert or something. You know what they told me in the hospital? The doctor said if I inhaled smoke for another 30 seconds, I'd probably be dead. Are you listening to me? I've been trying to track you down all day. We need to bolt. Yeah, oh, okay, I, I get you. I'm just saying it's a miracle that I'm alive. Okay, great. I mean, do you have any idea who did this? I mean, did you piss off your drug dealer or something? I'm telling you, I ain't done nothing, man. Well, what about your girlfriends? I mean, did you forget to call one of them or something? Yo, the only girl I've been with in the last month is Mia. You know, you know the French chick. You hear that? What? There's someone out there. Yo, careful, he might have a weapon. Over there, look. Hey, you! I see you behind the trash cans. Don't let him get away, man. You see which way he went? Uh-uh, check up the street, I'll look down here. Come on back, he's gone. Did you see his face? No, it was too dark. You know what? Something did happen last week. I knew it. You screwed over the wrong person, didn't you? No, 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 no. It's nothing like that. It was last Friday. I brought Mia home. You know, we were in the bed, half naked, getting it on, and I... Suddenly, I had this, this sensation that someone was watching us. And I turned around and I looked up at the window, but the, there was no one there. Uh, later, we were sharing a ciggy and I asked her about it and she said I was crazy. Still, I, I swore I heard breathing coming from the outside. So it's a pyro peeping thumb, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess. Lies in the Jar includes acting by John Jeffers, Kent Evans, Clara Dunham, Martin James Grappengetter, Lady Zen, Maya Jaillet, Jason Wellner, Ashley Frazier, and Nathan Feuerberg. Original music by Lady Zen, Joshua Holloway, and Dan Capaldi. With performances by Clara Dunham and special guest jazz musician Jaime Valle. Written and created by Nathan Feuerberg. Like what you hear? Why not subscribe and support shows like Playdate, Squad Car 22, and Flies in the Jar? Go to deepdrag.com and join our Patreon.